Hello everyone, welcome back. I hope you all are doing good. So today we are going to talk about difference between simple and differential staining. So let's start. See the first point of difference, number of stain used. In case of simple staining, we use only one stain. And in case of differential staining, we make the use of more than one stain. If I talk about stain, then stain is a kind of chemical or dye, which is usually a kind of coloring agent, okay? that improves the visualization of microorganisms by increasing contrast between the background and the object during microscopic examination, right? Let's see the second point of difference, color imparting. Simple staining imparts only one color to all bacterial cells under examination, right? As we use only one stain in case of simple staining. And if we talk about differential staining, differential staining imparts two or more different color to bacterial cells okay let's see the third point of difference outcome if we talk about outcome then simple staining helps us to determine the size shape and arrangement of bacterial cells okay whatever bacterial culture we are examining what is the shape of bacterial cells in that culture whether they are cocci that is circular or round shape whether they are rod shape that is bacilli or if any other shape is there that can easily be recorded after performing simple staining and along with that what kind of arrangement of bacterial cells is there in our sample so whether bacterial cells are singly placed whether they are present in pairs or they are going to make any kind of bunches groups or they are present in chains so this type of information can easily be derived about a culture after performing simple staining okay now we are coming towards the outcome of differential staining so just like simple staining differential staining can also helps us to determine the size shape and arrangement of bacterial cells under examination but along with that as the name of differential staining is it is indicating it also helps us to differentiate between different group of bacteria like gram positive and gram negative bacteria okay so next if we talk about one another outcome from differential staining, it also helps us to identify the presence of different type of structures like capsule, flagella, endospores present in bacterial cells, okay? So this is all about the outcome of simple and differential staining. Now we are looking towards some examples of simple staining and differential staining. So if we talk about simple staining, then methylene blue and crystal violet based staining are very good examples of simple staining which are routinely performed in microbiology laboratory okay and if i talk about differential staining then we can easily uh, come to know about these methods gram staining and acid fast staining which are very good examples of what for differentiation in groups of bacteria under examination like with the help of gram staining we can differentiate gram positive and gram negative bacteria and if i talk about acid fast staining Acid fast staining helps us to differentiate between acid fast bacteria and non acid fast bacteria. And one of the very good example of acid fast bacteria is Mycobacterium tuberculosis. That's why acid fast staining is also used in generally medical microbiology laboratory to identify Mycobacterium tuberculosis. Okay, acid fastness is actually a property of those bacteria which is related to the presence of mycolic acid in their cell wall. And non-acid fast bacteria, they are not having any kind of mycolic acid in the cell wall. So in this way, we can differentiate between different kind of group, gram positive and gram negative, acid fast and non-acid fast. And next, another is endospore staining. If I talk about endospore staining, endospore is a special kind of structure which is present only in some kind of bacteria means all bacteria cannot produce endospores. So endospore staining usually helps us to differentiate between endospore forming bacteria from that of non endospore forming bacteria and sometimes we are already aware about this that, that culture is of endospore former but we can locate the presence of spore in the vegetative cell that helps us to identify that particular spore forming bacteria on the basis of the presence of spore in the vegetative cell now we are coming towards general observation part so if i talk about general observation part this I would like to show you here with the help of some schematic diagrams, okay? Let's see now. So this uh, picture or this schematic diagram is showing you actually what? It is showing you a kind of unstained 
bacterial culture okay so here you can still visualize that circular shape and rod shaped bacteria are actually present but when it comes to the natural bacterial sample examination then you will find it becomes very difficult to observe the bacteria under microscopy directly without performing any staining protocol okay still some exceptions are there some pigmented bacteria and photosynthetic bacteria are there which are naturally having some colors but majority of the bacteria they are actually what they are colorless they are transparent we cannot visualize them with the help without any kind of staining protocol okay so that's why unstained specimen is actually difficult to examine okay to record different type of characteristics with respect to the size of bacteria shape of bacteria arrangement of bacteria okay so well now we are coming towards simple staining if we are having this culture and this is unstained after performing simple staining what kind of results usually we get so this kind of observations are actually taken by us after performing simple staining when we use crystal wallet so already i have told you in simple staining we will be making the use of only one stain so what we can expect that all bacteria whether they are of same genera same species or same strain whether they are of different genera different species or different strains they will be going to take the color of same dye because only one dye we are going to use here right so this type of results usually we get after simple staining okay now we are coming towards differential staining observations if i talk about differential staining observations then firstly you can observe note the observations for gram staining okay gram staining already i told you same culture is there and now we are going to perform gram staining for it what we can expect from here that gram staining after gram staining we can come to know about the presence of gram positive and gram negative bacteria so what will be the result of it that gram positive bacteria are usually stained by a uh, crystal wallet here okay crystal wallet is a dye what we use in gram staining protocol and they appear as purple or violet in color and if i talk about gram negative bacteria they will take the color of a counter stain that is safranin okay of another dye what we use in the same protocol so on the basis of color given by gram positive and gram negative bacteria we can differentiate between the these two group of bacteria okay by using gram staining so this is a very good example of differential staining now we are coming towards another staining that is endospore staining so in endospore staining actually we use two kind of dyes malachite green and safranin okay so malachite green is actually responsible for staining our spores and safranin give color to vegetative cells so firstly we can observe what is the outcome of endospore staining here that we can easily differentiate between endospore forming bacteria and endospore non forming bacteria but sometimes if we are already have already known about it that the culture is only of endospore former then we can also look for the location of the endospore right endospore is present at the central position or it is present terminally or subterminally because position of endospores also helps us to know that which kind of endospore forming bacteria it is right what is the genera of that particular endospore forming bacteria on the basis of position of the endospores in the vegetative cell right so the in this way you can come to know about it that gram staining is going to different help us in differentiating between two different group of bacteria gram positive and gram negative and endospore staining is also is showing us here what that it is going to show us the presence of a special type of structure that is endospores formed by some bacteria okay and it can also differentiate between endospore former and endospore non formers right so in this way these both type of stainings are very important uh for routine microbiology laboratory uh, work and if i talk about the significance of these staining methods firstly these staining methods are used commonly or routinely just to identify the unknown culture secondly we also use it the, these type of staining methods to check the purity of our previously stored culture whether that is pure or whether it is still retaining its characteristics after a long time storage and thirdly to diagnose the causal agent associated with a particular disease okay if that disease is of microbial origin then we also routinely go for performing these kind of staining methods just to uh, know about the 
bacterial culture okay associated with a particular patient sample so this is all about the uh, differences between simple and differential staining so i hope this information will really be useful for all of you and if you found it helpful then please press like and show some support by subscribing to our channel thank you so much keep watching